Hey friends, I'm still trying to find my footing here, so the structure for this roundup will probably change in the future. I know you don't really care about that though, so let's just get into this AI news roundup for July 2024. First up, we've got Meta doing the digital equivalent of taking its ball and going home in Brazil. Apparently they said no to Meta using Instagram posts for AI training. And in response, Zuckerberg's empire hit the pause button faster than you can say data privacy scandal. This sort of privacy first mentality mimics some other responses that we're seeing out of the EU, particularly from Italy. Now, I don't believe Brazil is going to play ball here. Meta is far from the only provider for free AI chatbot services, and realistically, this suspension doesn't stop people from accessing these models via the official GitHub or even something like a proxy server. To top things off, it doesn't look like the EU is getting multimodal support anytime soon. Meta is citing clarity issues with the current regulation over there. Multimodal support in this case means combining different forms of inputs or outputs, like text or voice, together. This could also mean trouble for one of the July releases we saw coming out from Meta, in particular SAM2. SAM2 is a computer vision model that tracks and segments objects, something that's interesting on its own, but Meta is likely looking at bundling into more models down the road. Over the last month or so, Meta has made a push for the ability for individuals to play with these tools online, taking away the hosting burden from the everyday person. In theory, this is great. In reality, it's just a new way to collect training data from something like Llama, which would traditionally be locally hosted. Speaking of Llama, 3.1 came out to a lot of professional huzzah. The metrics are great, especially when compared to LLMs like Claude Sonnet 3.5 or GPT-40. It's also being offered up on Meta AI and has replaced the previous Llama model on the Meta front end there. Bad news for hobbyists though, this model is censored, but that's a now problem and maybe not a forever problem. It's likely that as early as next month, we'll see some competent variants with less censorship rolling out. And last but not least, in meta-specific news, 3.1 is being used to power the new AI studio. This is a character and bot sharing platform Meta is introducing and will make an interesting rival to GPTs and character AI. This is something that in the coming weeks we'll likely see more articles coming about as the typical sensationalist cycle revolving around artificial intelligence hits this particular service. Moving on to some different corporate drama, let's talk about Anthropic. They're facing heat for allegedly ignoring opt-outs for web crawlers. That's like saying, I didn't see the do not disturb sign after barging into somebody's bedroom. The way these crawlers work is really simple. It's a script that reads a website, extracts certain data like text or images, and moves on to the next page until an entire site has been cataloged. This is a little reductive, but you get the gist. Big AI providers have said if websites add a specific file called a robot.txt, the crawler won't collect that data. In theory, we can just apply a rejects pattern to the code and it'll say, if this exists, skip to the next site. It's a very simple and straightforward protection. Now, I will say there's room here for healthy debate about if publicly available information on the web needs permission to be scraped, but at the end of the day, Anthropic and a number of other companies have entered an agreement with the public based on good faith. Most companies are not holding up their end of the bargain right now when it comes to this, though. This isn't likely to shake the public trust in Anthropic. It does, however, have some professionals looking twice. But hey, at least they're in good company because Apple, Nvidia, and Anthropic are all being accused of treating YouTube videos like an all-you-can-eat data buffet. So speaking of that, Anthropic might not have to worry about the legal or moral concerns from crawling YouTube much longer. The EU is giving them some unwanted attention for their partnership with Google, raising some concerns about a possible merger in the works. It's a pretty reasonable concern. One of the things I teach about is how some general purpose technology providers tend to have less competition as time goes on. That's something that we're already seeing on a small scale as providers who once had their own models now consider switching to APIs offered by tech giants. Switching gears to OAI, they've been busier than a one-armed juggler with their recent releases. GPT-4 got a mini-me perfect for the many users who have found cost to be a barrier to entry. 
this model is incredibly easy on the wallet and quite quick, making this technology even more accessible on a global scale. And this is some good news for OAI too, as hopefully tools like GPT-4 Mini will allow them to make a dent in the nearly $700,000 day-to-day operating budget. In OAI adjacent news, search GPT hit the scene, presumably for those times when an AI in your search engine just isn't enough. Now we've got a search engine in your AI. I feel like this is just an existing GPT feature with a twist that no one really asked for. But hey, part of the game in all of this is about being in the news cycle and always on the cusp of quote unquote innovation. After a voice outage that was likely spurred on by the potential of another lawsuit, OAI finally turned the volume back up, but only for some paying customers. And for the wordsmiths out there, GPT-4 can now spit out an essay longer than your college thesis with a special 64K output API connection they're calling GPT Long Output. This model might actually have an interesting use case for code enthusiasts tired of lazy outputs from GPT. Currently, 128K models from this provider have some weird quirks with how many lines of text it can accurately recall and more importantly recreate, which can lead to some problems for individuals looking to code with GPT for more than six to 700 lines. It's still up in the air right now as to whether or not the metrics of this model hold up long form for coding, but I imagine over the next couple of weeks we'll have some more definitive answers there. Jumping into the other news category, we've got Perplexity teaming up with WordPress. It's like the Warhammer kids at school decide to hang out with the horse girls, and I'm more than a little confused about the overall goal here beyond the claims from WordPress that there will be some increased traffic to sites. One thing is for sure though, this means Perplexity now has a very large and very legal source of training data that they can work with if WordPress shares it with them. Now this does fall in line with their current policy, which claims to aggregate data, but says that they won't sell it. It isn't unheard of for companies to share this data with other groups to help get more comprehensive data sets. Thankfully, WordPress has gotten a step ahead of the bad press here by making the opt-out process exceptionally simple and then opting out a number of sites automatically depending on their privacy settings. Meanwhile, Alibaba's president is having a mini existential crisis over the speed of artificial intelligence. He says it is developing so fast that keeping up is difficult. And I just gotta say, welcome to the club, my dude. Uh, we've all felt like we're running a marathon in flip-flops since GPT dropped. Last but not least, let's pivot to TTI. For those of you not in the know, TTI is a free and privacy-focused front-end I've been running for about the last year and change. During July, 1.9.1 and 1.9.2 patches came out for the GPT-powered front-end. I've added some more model options for the memory and lore systems. API endpoints were also updated to their most current available models, and a few additional bugs related to the context size flagging the memory system prematurely have also been fixed. And that about wraps things up for today, friends. This information moves fast, but hopefully we're all a little more caught up for at least like the next three days or something like that. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to see this channel grow. See you, nerds. So, so I'm not exactly sure why you're still listening, but um, maybe you're looking for, for something like that 300 subscribers special I said I was going to do. Well, uh, I did it and it's up on the Discord. I fulfilled a long-standing community request for some ASMR. Unfortunately, it was so cringy that I couldn't bring myself to post it here. Anyways, uh, it exists, have fun. I'll do something equally disturbing for the 1,000 subscriber special or something like that. Bye.